Welcome to the show where we talk about whatever we want, whenever we want, and nobody cares. Hey guys, I'm Joshua, and this is my brother and co-host Eli, and this, this is Podcast. podcast. Hey guys, we recently had a really big monumental moment for This Is Podcast as we got our very first 50 subscribers, and we just wanted to send out a big thank you to all of our subscribers that we have right now. So, this This is Thank thank you. You. And now, on with the show. Hey guys, hope you're having a beautiful day, and uh, welcome back to another episode of This Is Podcast. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know... Something we have done week to week, of course, is talk about uh, some things going on in the world. Um, generally, we try and acknowledge, you know, not necessarily news, but just try and acknowledge any of the, any of, if there was anything major, uh, mm-hmm. tragedy-wise. And it seems, unfortunately, that week to week... It's more and more. There's just more tragedies every week. So, um, you know, we're going to get into that, we're gonna get into that a little bit this week, you know, talk about some of the things that happened this, 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 prior, uh, this prior week. Um, but... Before I go uh, uh, into that, excuse me, um, you know, same way you and I have talked about just last couple days because there seems to be a multitude of things going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've talked about putting out a Monday segment, a news segment, sort of. Yeah, you know, and do like a, this is news or uh, this is headlines, um, where we kind of recap the events of the previous week. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be like a ten-minute episode. Um, so guys, comment below, um, tell us what you think. Is that something we should do? Something we shouldn't do? Um, do you not care to hear it or do you do, or do you, are you really interested? You do want to hear us talk about comment below. Let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. Um, so with that said, take us a, go ahead and, uh, let's forge ahead. Eli, why don't you give us the uh, first piece the first thing that kind of took Um, place. To be honest, I wrote these down, but I don't know if they're in order or not. So I'm just going to go and write down, go with the first thing that was here, uh, there was a shooting in Munich at mm-hmm. the Olympia Mall. Um, there was a gentleman who they are saying was aligned with ISIS, uh, with the Islamic State. Um, there were nine dead, uh, with many others injured. They said uh, they did make a point to say that there were multiple um, uh, young people, mm-hmm. um, uh, teens and children. Right. Um, among the casualties, they did not say deaths or not, but. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's one of them. So, um, of course, there was also a suicide bombing in Kabul, and there was eighty killed, among with a lot of others. Uh, injured, uh, of yeah, a lot of injured. Um, and you know, the thing is, we don't talk about. Uh, you know, we've all kind of forgotten about Afghanistan. You know, the whole Middle East. We don't talk about the actual news that goes on in the Middle East because it seems to be on a day to day basis. But Kabul's actually been. Relatively safe, a relatively safe place. Mm-hmm. Relatively being, you know, within the whole Middle East, right? Um, right now, as in a very volatile situation, um, Kabul's been a, a, a slightly more uh, safe place, so you don't hear about it as much right. going on there. Um, there was also in Japan, there was a gentleman uh, who said uh, who went into a home for the disabled, and in their sleep. Stabbed 19 people to death. Um, he killed 19 people and injured many yes. others. Um, and he, uh, they were saying that he said something along the lines of, uh, disabled people should cease to exist, still help our world or something. I don't know. Like, he thought they should be euthanized was the yeah. term he used. Um, now, uh, the next thing is, is out of order because it, it, it happened just a few hours ago, and I don't know if all the details are in yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm waiting for updates. But uh, there was a, uh, a stabbing. Oh well, there was some uh, uh, a few men that were aligning themselves with ISIS. Now, whether or not they are ISIS, um, the way the, that that um, I believe it was MSNBC said, um, they they said that they were actually soldiers of ISIS. Okay. So I don't know if that's I, I don't know. I believe it was them. I don't don't quote me. I believe it was that article that I was reading that said that they actually were soldiers of ISIS that did this. Right, and so they went to a church this morning during Mass in Rouen, France, 
and uh, they slit the throat thro slit the throat of a priest and uh, took four people hostage before the police showed up and killed killed them. Yes. Um, and so finally, go ahead. The last one, which happened last night on Monday, when I mean, we filmed this on Tuesday, is uh, at Club Blue in Fort Myers. There was a teen night going on where there was a. Uh, uh, People between the ages of 12 and 17 were in the nightclub. It was they called like a no ID needed night or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but by the uh, as they were leaving around 12:30, um, somebody shot up the crowd. Two of them were two people were killed. Um, well, I believe they were 14 and 17 years old, if I understood correctly. Um, and there were uh, I believe up to tw I think they said m multiple other injuries. And last I read, the shooter is still at large. I'll have to look at that. I, um, know, I, unfortunately, with everything else that was going on, and a lot of this happened over the weekend, yeah. it's hard for me to follow. We were gone over the weekend. Um, so, uh, you know, what's interesting is that they, they said that they were quick to say this isn't terrorism. Yeah. And I, it's something you said. It's something I say every time something like this happens. And it's that, you know, whether it's urban terrorism or homegrown terrorism, it's terrorism. Or, you know, whether it's ISIS or... Americans, you know, lashing out. It is it, no matter how you look at it, it's still terrorism. They keep saying this. There, it's been claimed as not an act of terrorism, unless you fall on like the definition of terrorism being specifically to rile up a crowd or something like that. You know, the thing is that they will change their opinions very fast if they find a guy that they that it says did this, and I they say, oh yeah, I'm a member of the Islamic State. They they will explode saying, wait a minute, we lied, we lied. This is we, we were wrong. This is an act of terrorism, because it happened, and the, the same thing happened. No matter how, it's not going to change what happened, but they're going to change the name because of who did it. Right. So it, it it's still an act of terrorism. It's an act of domestic terrorism. Mm -hmm. Someone went into a crowd of of young people, and shot at them. Right. Right. So, um, so I mean, there's that. That that's you know, it, you know. There's our our news for the week. Mm -hmm. um, they are tragedies, um, as always. Uh, you know, to we, our you know our, our friends and you know uh, around the world and you know family in Germany and and uh, uh, Afghanistan, in uh, Florida, uh, in Japan. In France, you know, everywhere. As we always say, you know, when we see these things, when we read these things, you know, our hearts and prayers do go out to you. Mm. Um, you know, we don't want to. You know, we we are not promoters of violence in any sense, and we you know hate to see any kind of life taken. Um, and so, from the this is podcast family, you know, we you know our hearts and our prayers do go out to you. And we are thinking about you. So. Um, there is that. In, in other news, there was um, the RNC, the Republican National Convention, happened, happened over the weekend. Uh, um, actually, before the weekend. Which, um, you know, let me, I'm going to go ahead and throw a shout out right now. Cleveland police did an exemplary. It wasn't just Cleveland, it was, there was a, all over. You know, anytime you have a political convention, I, Republican or Democrat, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have a convention, a whole lot of stupid comes out. And. You know, there was a whole lot of stupid going on on both parties. Mm -hmm. There was a whole lot of stupid going on with not just politicians, but with just regular people mm -hmm. aligning themselves with one or the other. Um, there were guns out. There were protesters. And the Cleveland police did an exemplary job. Things could have gone bad. Mm. Thing, All the right pieces were there. For a majorly disastrous event, and the Cleveland police just—they just did their job. They did it well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm proud to say that you know they, they, you know that there's an Ohio police force that you know just you know they did an incredible job. Yeah. Um, so you know that's that's just incredible. So yes, the RNC did happen this weekend. And the the. Uh DNC, the Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia, is going on right now. It started right. last night, or yesterday, I should say. Um, and uh, it's interesting to see what's going on. I don't want to really talk about it because I don't know all the details. I haven't been really keeping up on it because there's been a lot of other news uh, going on. Yesterday, we kind of slept as well. Um, a lot. Yesterday was a relaxed day for everybody except for poor Michelle had to go to work. Um, 
but and I had a concert last night, a performance with the Sun Lake Summer Youth Band that I teach in. Um, but we had we w we went away over the weekend. We had talked about that in the last uh, podcast, which we talked about travel. Right. Um, but we went away to see your mother in law and her family. Right. Yep. And uh, we did a lot of things during the weekend. But one of the things we did, we sat down in front of the TV, anyways. And because she has a cable up there, and we watched some stuff from Comic Con. Well, um, and that, yeah, yeah, it was being of Comic Con. It was being of conventions. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of conventions. Um, we we saw stuff from the Comic Con. We watched Conan do his little bit there. Right. Um, uh, <clears throat> Uh, and that is not Conan the Barbarian, in case you were wondering. Um, he, he did his little bit, we saw some... One of the most exciting things, though, that a lot of people that don't actually go to the convention are waiting to see is the trailers that come out. Right, the Comic-Con trailers. And one thing, before we talk about the trailers that we do want to talk about, there's a trailer that I saw came out there that I didn't think fit, was Snowden. It's about Edward Snowden, no, right, the, the right. gentleman who, um, who was a... I think he was a tech specialist. NSA who, analyst. NSA analyst who released a bunch of uh, public and uh, private. Inf uh, uh, he leaked a bunch of inform. He, he leaked a bunch of information that proved that the NSA was indeed illegally spying on people, spying on regular U.S. citizens. Um, whether or not you feel that is something that is you know, it was bad. a necessary evil, or if you feel. That you know that you have the right privacy to privacy is is a non. But it, what he, what he did do is he did prove that yeah. it was indeed going on. Well, not only that, I don't think that movie goes with Comic Con. Well, that was He's the thing. Yeah, when character. I saw, I was you know, like, if you want to make a movie about it, people make movies about everything today. But if you want to make a movie about it, why are we releasing a movie about Edward Snowden at Comic Con? Comic -Con. Now, yeah. someone probably made a, a, some sort of case of why it should have been there. Uh, why it should have been released there, but I, I don't know what that case might have been, but I don't believe it belonged to Comic-Con. Right. And just in general, that's a, that's a political thing um, that, of all things, you know, maybe they should have released it at the RNC. Right. Or the DNC. <laughs> or the DNC. Or both, or that, whatever. That, that sounds stupid, and of course you don't normally do that, although we saw some stuff like that going on at the D, at the RNC. Um, uh, well, I'm sure we're going to see stuff like that at the at DNC. The DNC oh, we well. sure we are. So, uh, um, it's like I said, you know, when you come, when it comes to political conventions, a whole lot of stupid, stupid comes, comes out. out. Yeah. And that I'm not, you know, I'm not going to get into politics. I'm going to simply say that's all politics, yeah. Republican or Democrat. It doesn't matter. Or anything else. Um, it was a surprise to see that Snowden wasn't there. It was also a surprise to me that we didn't see anything for episode eight. A Star uh, for Star Wars. Yeah, that there wasn't any kind of just teaser or something, or even George Rogue Lucas One. walks in, or, or you know, a straight yeah, up an, Rogue, a, a, a straight up Rogue One trailer. But we did just recently get a new from Rogue One Star Wars Celebration, but it wasn't a trailer. So, it was a uh, it was a sneak peek kind of deal. It was kind of a sneak peek behind the behind the scenes. Um, but out of the few trailers that we've seen, now we watched a bunch of them um, to catch up a little bit, see what see what's all going on. But out of the ones that what, what do you think your favorite was of the, of the ones released? <sighs> oh, that's hard to say. You know, um... Well, let's... let's oh, that's hard That's hard for me to say. <laughs> what, what's yours? Let, let me, let me start um, with you. I think mine is Fantastic Beasts um, and Where to Find Them. And mostly because I was raised... I saw every single Harry Potter movie mm -hmm. in theaters. Now, remember, this is not being labeled as a Harry Potter movie. It's a movie based on J.K. Rowling's world and books. And, mm -hmm. um, in I, fact, it takes decades before... Yeah, it Harry takes place during the 20s, I believe. Yeah. Uh, during the 20s in New York City. That's one of the things I'm most excited for is that it takes place in the United States. You know, um, one of my favorite video games I played on the GameCube was... Uh, I can't remember what it was called, but it was a Quidditch game. I'll put, a, I'll put up the poster here, uh, the front of the box from the game, um, but it was a Quidditch game. And you had, you played for and against teams from all around the world. Right. And that was so awesome to me. Now, I hated the American arena. I had pumpkins flying around, like that, like it was a Halloween themed arena. I hated it, but I don't care. It was it still, it, it opened my eyes to the fact that the Harry Potter world, the, the magical world, J.K. Rowling's Magical World, we'll call it that, is based on... It, it, it's not just based on... It's not just in England. It's not just a Hogwarts. 
it's everywhere. Right. And you got to see little sneak peeks of that during uh, the Goblet of Fire when Dome Shang came and uh, the Bobatons came. Right. Um, from France and Norway. Uh, and, but then you also got to see some of that also at the beginning of that one when you saw Victor Crumb, who's from Norway, playing for the Bulgarian team, I believe it was. Um, so you got to see... And, and I'm not... I, if I got those facts wrong, you can laugh at me all you want. I, I'm not a a pothead, as they call them. I'm not a huge... I, I don't know every detail about Harry Potter. But, um... I was raised... I read all the books as they, you know, uh, as I could. Um, I had them finished before I got into junior high school. Um, I went to... As I said, I saw every movie in theaters. Um, including I saw seven part... I saw number six... Three times in theaters, I saw seven part one, um, four, uh, no, two times in theaters, and then I saw seven part two three times in theaters. So, uh, I I got into it a lot. Right. And I, I would like to, again, sometimes sit down and read the books again, because I know the books are a little bit more intensive, just like with every book to movie conversion. Um, they're, you know, the books are a little bit more intensive than the movies are. So, it is... It is one of those things I'm super excited for. You know, uh, I was on the front end of the Harry Potter experience. I when book one came out, it was written for my age group that I currently was. Uh, you know, I was you know, like 12, mm -hmm. 10, 12. He was at the time. Um, and so I kind of grew up with them. You know, I did read the books. They are good. I'm not a huge. Potter fan. Mm -hmm. I like the books. I like the movies. I haven't seen all the movies. I don't think I've. I don't think I watched part seven. I don't think part I've seen the last seven, two part or one three. and two. Um, which is something else. The Potter movies were some of the first to have their final book split into two movies, mm -hmm. which has become a theme. Which has become a thing. Uh, uh, the Hobbit. Um, the Hunger well, Games split into three. Yeah, Hunger Games. Uh, Mockingjay was split into two. two. Which I Twilight. Seen Twilight did that with Breaking Dawn. Mm -hmm. um, um, which is just, which we all know is just some utter bullshit to most of make. Them, most of them can't, could be easily put into one movie. All Breaking of them. Uh, Dawn could have been. Um, a Hobbit, um, very obviously, The Hobbit was reaching a lot to get some, some extra. Well, Hobbit was just making shit up. I mean, Hob uh, The Hobbit could have been put. I mean, it was, technically, the book was written as a children's book. Um, it's the shortest of the Tolkien's it's works. It's like this thick. It could have been in one movie easily. Really, could have been truly, one short movie, sort of. Um, they, you know, there was that. Maybe with Mockingjay, uh, the Hunger Games Mockingjay. Mockingjay maybe is no shorter or longer than the other two, so you know they could have done. Um, with Harry Potter, I understood it because the book was bigger and there was a lot packed into it, and they really wanted to give the fans of the of the series a good close. Because it was, there was so much to it that they wanted to put as much as they could from the last book in. And there was a lot of details that were involved in that last book. I don't know. I, I think that they were more concerned with lining their pockets and giving the fans a good exit. Um, you know, obviously they accomplished both, but... But also making money. I, I don't know. I think, that, I think the money was the forefront on their mind. So... And, do you think that the, by making another movie based on that world is them reaching for money, or do you think it's them reaching to reaching out for fans? Um, you know, that's in your hard opinion, to say. that's hard to say. You know, I will say when you look at look at like look at like um J.K. Rowling, mm -hmm. look at um uh, uh I was gonna say Rupert Grant, that's not his name. Well, who's the who's the the guy that plays Harry? Um, Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe. Thank you. When you look at them, right? Mm -hmm. They started their careers at the top of their game. Mm -hmm. They will never reach the accomplishment. You know, uh, J.K. Rowling will never write a book or a book series that will top her Harry Potter series. Mm -hmm. She started her career at the top of the game. It wasn't like she kind of started slow and built up and came to a pinnacle. Well, because really, she may... I actually don't know if she did write before that. I know she was a writer. I don't know if she wrote anything big before that. But I do know that that Harry Potter, just the first one, when it exploded um, as the Philosopher's Stone, is what it was called, in Britain, right. and then in the United States it ended up being called the Sorcerer's Stone, um, 
as it, it, it blew up, and that was really her big thing. And then as she made it through the whole series, it kind of was steady, just lots of, lots of sales, lots of money, lots of, and lots of fans. Right. But then after I'm just that, saying, I'm just saying that she started her, I'm, what I'm saying is she started her career at the pinnacle of mm -hmm. her career. Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter. Well. Started his career at the pinnacle well, of his career. Well, the thing is that Daniel Radcliffe, uh, Rupert Grant, and, and, um, uh, uh, Emma Watson, I don't know about all, all three of them, but I know most, they were, first of all, they were children. They were actually children when they filmed the well, first yeah. movie. And when they did that, I don't think any of the three had careers in acting at the time. Well, the point I'm trying to make is this. When you start a career at the pinnacle of your career, mm -hmm. not a build-up to, well, you, you, everything you do after, people are going to look at you sideways like, well, okay, are you just trying to make money now? Mm -hmm. Because you can never top the success. Of, Rupert Grant is never going to top the success of being Harry Potter. Ron Weasley. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Ron Weasley. Dan Radcliffe is never going to top the success of being Harry Potter. Now... Emma Watson has been doing a lot of acting since then. She is still... Daniel Radcliffe's still in the game. He's doing some stuff. We've so is Rupert Grant. We just saw Daniel Radcliffe in... Uh, uh, we haven't seen it. He's in the movie that's either in theaters right now or coming soon. Um, uh, what do they call it? Swiss Army Man or something like that? It looks... Yeah. It looks very interesting. I I, I I probably won't see it in theaters. But... um. I had zero interest. So we, I was like, we yeah, see no. him. We see him in that, and really, that's all, already not going to be as big as Harry Potter. That's what I'm saying, though. But none of those children, none of those young people, Emma are Watson, going to be. Emma Watson still acting. She's been in some stuff. Uh, she was in Pokes of Being a Wallflower, which got huge, uh, got great reviews. Okay, but as it great got, and as big as Harry Potter. Well, it won't be because it's not eight movies. Exactly. Well, but still, even okay, take so, any single one movie, it didn't do as well. And that's what I'm saying. When you start your career at the pinnacle of your career, mm -hmm. you can never top that. Say, you know, look at Orlando Bloom syndrome. You know, Orlando Bloom is Legolas. He's never going to top that, and yeah. he hasn't since. Well, unfortunately, he's he's kind of one of the people that got typecasted. A lot of people get typecasted. That's part too. of the, that's the other problem. You know, everyone people get typecasted. People see Daniel Radcliffe, they think, oh, it's Harry Potter. It's Harry Potter, exactly. And you know, and that's part of why that's that issue. You know, J.K. Rowling has written books that are non-magical. Uh, I think she wrote a mystery novel several years ago. I think that was where she originally started. Was and novels, you know, nobody gives a nobody it. gives a crap. Why? Because she's the lady that writes Harry Potter books. Mm -hmm. She wrote um, magic. She, so, and then she also wrote thing. Uh, wow, well, uh, what's it called? What's the new one called? Uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. She actually wrote. Okay. The book. She also wrote the book. Um, uh, the Tales of Beetle and Bard. She wrote that book after it was mentioned in the Harry Potter series. Yes. And then I think she wrote one more Harry Potter related one that was about. It wasn't this one, but it was about the creatures. Like an encyclopedia. Or right. Like that, the creatures or something like that. So, so Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find them does look very interesting to me. I do. I, I, I well, think it looks so, very so interesting. What I'm excited about personally, just personally, is to see Eddie Redmayne. Or Ed, Eddie Redmayne. I don't want to pronounce his last name, to be honest. He played in. Les Mis as Marius in the, the recent 2012 Les Mis movie um, as Marius and that excites me because I actually really love my movie love that movie it introduced me to Les Mis since and I'm not going to be that guy like oh I love Les Mis just because I saw the, the 2012 rendition which a lot of people hated a lot of musicians hated I loved it but um, it introduced me into the world of Les Mis I've watched since then I've watched some of the older renditions with uh, Liam Neeson in it um, and I've watched now, I've never seen it live, but I've watched recorded versions of live, um, and I really and I've listened to some of the other tracks. I still I really love Les Misérables, and to me, just in general, talking about that, I see Eddie Redmayne again, and I have not. Now he's been an actor for quite some time, if I understand it, but I've never seen him in something because he mostly he's mostly in British stuff. So I get to see him in this. I'm excited about that, and he is a British man in England, in uh, New in York. New York. He's not. You know, British men playing an American, um, which we've seen before. People playing the wrong cast. We'll talk about that some other time. Um, so it was Comic Con. It was Comic Con. And so obviously, what's the big movie that was shown? Justice League was Justice League. Obviously, one of the biggest comic book teams of all time. You know, um, the original, the, the, X -Men. the original comic team. Uh, um, uh, uh, I'm guarded. Mm-hmm. After Batman v Superman. After Batman v Superman. I, I I don't know. I'm guarded. There's several things going on here. One, it's Zack Snyder again. You everybody I knows. Did, I did every, not know that. 
Everybody that, knows that how I feel about everybody knows how I feel about Zack Snyder. Well, everybody knows how the last Everybody knows how Batman v Superman went down. I wasn't a fan. I, I'm I'm just uh, I, didn't I, know they I kept I, him on. They, oh yeah, they kept him on. He, he so I, I I'm incredibly guarded. It looks better than Batman v Superman. Mm -hmm. Well the commercial definitely does. The commercial the definitely trailer, looks the trailer commercial. definitely looks better, but I just don't it's gonna be hard taking um uh Murderous Batman. Murdery, murdery serial killer Batman. And then take him from Batman v Superman and then turn him into the leader of, Justice League. of the Justice League. Like this. In one movie. It's going to be really hard to make that translate. Um, saw the Flash in it. He's not the Flash from the show. Though. He's not the Flash. He's not Grant Gustin who played him in who plays him in the TV show. He's, he's Which somebody. I love. I love the show. We, well, we the, problem is this, the problem is this. The problem is this. I liked the the guy that they picked. Mm -hmm. I liked the way he For his, was, was was portrayed in Just League. Mm -hmm. But then I but then when I step back, I was like, you know, really, truthfully though, it kind of just seems like they're carbon copying Grant Gustin from the TV show. Mm -hmm. And in that case, why didn't you just get Grant Gustin. Grant Gustin to do it? You know, why did you separate them? I why think because they're not in, not in the same contract? You know what I mean? Is that because of that? Well, no. DC said they were intentionally separating the TV universe from the movie universe so there's the dc tv so and eventually the DC they can add mvu so, so eventually they can add uh you know Gr green arrow if they want to a justice league movie even though he i don't it, he, but it won't be uh but it won't be steven omel yeah so um so i i don't know i'm i'm so guarded i i just i i'm know, so guarded about it talking about Batman's universe and the Justice League universe as a whole. Two other trailers that were released was the Wonder Woman trailer, mm -hmm. which is I think is the first one. Am I correct? It is the first Wonder Woman. And then Suicide Squad had probably its last trailer because it's, it's coming out coming this weekend. Out this, week. this week, I think. So I think. Don't quote me on that. Very soon. Um, but Suicide Squad, we've seen. Everyone's seen the commercial right. trailers now. Um, the new trailer honestly didn't bring much new to the table to me. Right. Um, well, let's, let's, well, we'll come back to that and talk about Wonder Woman's first time. What did you think? Wonder Woman is really cool to me. She, she looks good. She, she now, looks you, incredible. You saw her in Batman v Superman, which we have not seen yet still. Um, you saw her in that. She looks incredible. She's hot. <laughs> what did you think about? What did you think of? I thought the fighting looked incredible. The fighting looks awesome. It takes place in World War One, which is a little super different. interesting. Yeah. Um, something that I've We've seen a lot recently. Is you know Battlefield One's coming out mm -hmm. in World War One. What's the other thing that was coming out in World War One? There's another. It's a video game or, or a movie that's coming out in World War One. Yeah, I. I can't remember. And then there's this. She's in World War One, and something that came, that I realized recently was that World War One just happened. Not just happened. Happened a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago from today, World War One was going on. Right. Um, it happened from 1914 to 1918. Right. So, actually speaking, it makes sense. Right. It kind of makes sense that it's bring, they're bringing up now because it's the 100th anniversary time period of World War One on November 11th, 2018. Will be the end of Armistice be, Day. Will be the 100th year of Armistice Day, the end of World War One, the end of the Great War. So, um... And I think that's probably, that could be a reason why they're bringing that up a lot. Uh, in Assassin's Creed, you played a little bit in World, World War I, One, right? at the end of uh, um, Syndicate. Right. So, it, it's just very interesting to me to see that they're doing that. Yeah. Um, so, I, it did look good. I was really excited. Um, now, you mentioned Suicide Squad. The only thing I have to say about Suicide Squad is, again, I'm guarded. But it looks like it could be really good, or it's gonna be a piece of shit. It's gonna be. It's either gonna be one of those. It's gonna be great or a piece of shit. Uh -huh. It's not gonna be anywhere in the middle. Well, Will Smith plays a Will Smith character. That's the only thing about I didn't like. Will Smith is too heroic for the series. Well, you know, he, he gives out these generic Will Smith lines. You know, let's go save the world. You know, and it's just like, eh, are you supposed to be a murderer? You're a bad guy. Well, he's. He's an assassin with a heart of gold, but still, he's an assassin. He's still a villain in the DCU. Yeah. And I just felt like, ah, it's, it's, yeah. One commercial that we, one, one trailer that we just watched earlier that we did not see over the weekend, but we just watched right before this was for Doctor Strange. I'm excited about I that. I'm so pumped for that. He's, he's one of my favorite heroes from the, from the Marvel Universe. Absolutely. Um, and when they first said that 
uh, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch was going to play him. I was like, it was kind of like when we first. Oh, said, I was excited like, about it. When, 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 ben, when we first heard that Ben Ben Affleck was playing Batman, we were like, Ugh. he actually doesn't look bad. I don't think he looks incredible. No, I I was but, actually pretty excited about when I heard about him because I. As soon as they said Benedict Cumberbatch, I got excited because oh, I was like, "Oh my goodness, Benedict that's gonna be Cumberbatch. awesome!" That's seeing Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. But then now seeing him with with the the traditional Doctor Strange, the goatee, goatee and he's got the cape, and the cape. See, in that, you have to see the the, the trailer, the trailer where he flips he, his cape he out. He flips his cape and it goes, it like kind of magically goes, and it just attaches right to him. You're like, "Oh, it's so cool!" You, you did see so when he was good. doing his when he was doing his his spells or whatever. You could see like the the, mm -hmm. the geometry of the. Green thing, the, the and that was pretty cool. That's straight from the comic books. Mm -hmm. um, so that looked really, really good. They also make me Lego Batman movie, which is based on the Lego Batman from the Lego movie. Yeah. So that's that's gonna be interesting. We'll see. I mean, the Lego movie was a surprise. It was surprisingly good. Lego movie has at the end has Will uh, Will Ferrell when. When he had, he has a scene in the end with his son mm -hmm. that is so heartbreaking. Yeah. That is so raw and real. It was such a surprise coming out of a children's movie, coming out of a a a, a, a movie based on toys. Mm -hmm. It was so surprising. I was like, oh my god, I didn't even know he could act like this. You know, usually he's in comedies and he's usually kind of, you know. But this was it was. Uh, 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 it was incredible. I, I mm -hmm. so. Lego like Batman could be good. There was something else. What else was uh was coming out? What other trailer? What was the other, the other trailer? Uh, there was one more we had written down here. Uh, that's it. Lego like Batman, Doctor Strange. So with Doctor Strange, who I'm hoping will open up for the Midnight Suns. That would be awesome. I one of my favorite comic series was Midnight Suns. Ghost Rider, uh, Johnny Cage. I want to see. Not Johnny Cage. Nick Cage. <laughs> Cage and Johnny Blaze, which happens to also be a street uh, Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Johnny Cage and Mortal. I I do, I, I do Johnny see, Blaze Ghost I Rider. I want to see a new Ghost Rider not played by Nick Cage. Nick Cage, um, of all things. But Nick I do want to see. I want to see that. That want to see that Midnight Suns arc. You know, mm -hmm. with Blade. Pun uh, not Punisher. No, it was, um, it was Blade, Punisher, Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze, Doctor Strange, Hannibal King. Um. Off and on, there was uh, uh, the living vampire. Can't think of his name right off the top of my head. Um, and off and on, there were characters that were kind of in it, but then they would kind of leave. But mm -hmm. they were kind of like they were kind of like uh, sub, like you know, allies of the Midnight Suns, not necessarily directly in. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be really really cool to yeah. see that. I would love to see that movie. Well, we we've been out of time for. A long time. We are out of time. Um, so sign us out. So until next time, I'm Eli. I'm Joshua. And this, this is podcast. podcast. So what do you think? What do you think about? Maybe I should cry for help. Maybe I should feed myself. <laughs> that could work. Oh hey. Hey there. Do you like today's episode? Don't forget to go ahead and press that little like button below. And also subscribe if you really like what you see. Also share it with your friends if you think they'll enjoy it. And comment if you have any experiences with what we talked about today. Also, guys, don't forget to check out our Facebook and our Instagram at This Is Podcast. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have to get back to scripting so we can keep making videos for you. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys.